Hey everybody, this is Steam from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews, and it's it's a pretty tiny week, folks. Uh, there is one book to, to catch up from last week, uh, but yeah, it's it's really tiny. But uh, sometimes that's a good thing because one, it helps you kind of catch up maybe with some stuff you missed. Uh, also, if you're a big pile of reading, which mine usually is, but because I have tons of like <laughs> graphic novels and trades and stuff that I pick up that I just really haven't got a chance to get around to. So hopefully a week like this uh, helps you catch up. And also maybe when you're lo at your local comic shop, you could also pick up maybe some new books, maybe something you haven't had a chance to try out. Um, you know, with that maybe extra money. Uh, I know times are tight, but if you have a little extra money, maybe try something new. So we'll see. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, check with your local comic shop to see what they've got. You know, maybe there's some things that you missed. So let's get going with this week's books. First up, we have Doom One Shot, written by Samford Green and Jonathan Hickman, with artwork by Samford Green. Uh, so this kind of follows like there was the Hulk future end stuff like that so it's it's almost a like what if ending for Doctor Doom and ba and what the basic premise here is that uh Galactus has basically gone on a rampage he's he didn't eat earth but he basically destroyed it killed all the heroes and so Doctor Doom went after him kind of you know build a giant doom robot that didn't work out too well uh but uh valera richards uh she helps him build a new suit with the infinity uh um cubes and so he can he can take on galactus and stop his rampage of you know going through the universe destroying planets and eating them because he's he, you know so that's the basic premise here um uh, this is the first book, uh, well, it's written by Sanford Green. He came up with the plot and everything, and then uh, he's good friends with Jonathan Hickman, so they banged out uh, the story together, and so uh, Jonathan gave, that's why they get co-writing credits, because uh, Jonathan kind of helped Sanford, because he's, he's uh, done an artist, but this is the first book he's actually written, so... Um, overall, I think the, the, the story's really good. I think that's one of its really, the, the concept's really good. And then you have Green's artwork. And if you're familiar with like Bitterroot and some of the other work that he's done, he really went to town on this. This is really like his big, uh, you know, love letter to like the Marvel universe and, and Kirby and, you know, all that period of stuff. So it's, it's actually a fun little book, um, uh, and it's I like the fact that it's it's somewhat of an imaginary story, kind of like what if elsewhere type thing. And that always gives you a wide berth to do whatever you want. And I think Samford uh, Green has really taken that baton and really went to town on this. And I actually really liked it. Um, I'm a big fan of his artwork, especially, you know, big fan of Bitterroot. And I just think it was really like a good, solid story with gr really nice art. So it's well worth checking out this week. Next up, we have Batman Dylan Dog, number three, written by Roberto Risinoi, Risinoi, uh, with artwork by Gigi uh, Camago and Werther de Edra. Uh, so this wraps up the story. And basically what it is is Christopher Killer uh, Keelix has you know fled Europe and he's come back to Gotham to because he escaped hell uh and so Batman and Dylan Dog have he, he's gone back to Gotham and so the Joker was the one who basically brought him back from the grave and even the Joker's like he's a monster and you're like oh crap because if the Joker thinks he's a monster it's really bad cuz what the premise of that character is he's he basically kills people to try to find people's soul and and he so he hasn't been able to do it and so it's up to Dylan Dog and Batman to to basically defeat him and uh I don't want to give anything away mo anymore but obviously the good guys win uh you know it's a superhero book but I think the ending is actually quite unique in in the sense of once once they defeat him that really the the way that the story ends is quite interesting and i really I, it was really unusual but really well done um i actually really dug this series uh uh rossini uh the the story is really good he blended the together the, the two characters together quite nicely 
And uh, the artwork by uh, Kevigo and Deledra was really nice. It was really a good looking book. Um, as with most of these team ups, they're pretty basic stories, but I think they all found a way to put some imagination in there. Of course, you know, throwing in John Constantine and uh, uh, Etrigan was always a, uh, a plus. So uh, it, it was a fun little book. So I think if you, you missed it, uh, definitely there'll, there'll be a trade probably coming out in a month or two. It's well worth picking up. I really enjoyed it. It was good, solid story, really nice artwork. And uh, it was just a lot of fun with these two kind of very different characters coming together. So uh, next up, we have... Godzilla's 70th anniversary one shot. So there's a bunch of stories. So we're going to go through them real quick. So we have Half a Century Boar, <clears throat> written and drawn by uh, James Stokey. Uh, Contagion, written by Dan DiDio and Joel, with artwork by Joel Jones. Uh, then we have Of Gods and Con Artists, written by Danny Lohr, with artwork by Sebastian Prias. Uh, In the Shadow of a God, written and drawn by Matt Frank. Uh, in the Darkness, uh, written and drawn by E.J. Sue. Uh, the Big One, uh, written and drawn by Adam Gorham. Uh, then we have Ain't No Place for Angel, written by Casey Gilley, with artwork be by Liana Kangas. Uh, in Summation, written by Michael W. Conrad, and uh, with artwork by B Gigi uh, Shaw. And then finally, we have Af Aftermath, uh, written and drawn by Natasha uh, Alter C. So uh, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of stories here. So what I'm going to do is overall, I want to say that actually, you know, it's it's uh, let's see, it's uh, what's the cover price here? I think it's like uh, it's like ten bucks. Okay, so it's ten bucks. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stories, close to a little over a buck a buck a, a, a story. So I always gauge these. Uh, specials by how is it worth the ten dollars? Are the stories the good thing is there was none of the stories I thought were like bad or they're like oh I didn't like that. Most of them were actually really solid stories, but there were some that I really really like enjoyed, and that's not saying that they're better than others. There were just certain ones, uh, and the ones that I found that I liked, you know, maybe a little bit better or not the ones you're going to like, but overall, none of them were clunkers. So that was a big plus. So the, uh, the half century, uh, by, uh, Stokey was really a lot of fun. It actually injected humor. It's about these guys who have to clean up, uh, after Godzilla, uh, kills, he uh, Hedera. And it's just, it's really a fun little story. And of course, uh, Stokey's artwork is absolutely gorgeous. But it really, I like the fact that it was kind of goofy and fun, you know. And uh, that one was really good. Um, then uh, the Contagion by uh, Didio and Jones was actually really interesting. It's about a scientist who creates this uh, virus and the the virus gets out in the form of like a giant mosquito and it 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 can kill people. So basically it's Godzilla to the rescue. And I don't want to reveal the ending, but it really is. Uh, it has a great twist ending, which is really perfect. It, you know, it's, it's one of those, be careful what you wish for because it may not turn out well. Uh, then we have uh, shadow of the gods uh, in the shadow of the gods by uh, Matt Frank, uh, which is about a girl surviving uh, the, the city being destroyed by Godzilla. And there's these sh shellfish she comes across and she helps them, you know, survive the chaos of Godzilla destroying the city. That one was really good. I really like the artwork and it, it it's kind of a somewhat silent story, but I really enjoyed it. It was really, it, it brought the, like the humanity of trying to deal with Godzilla destroying the city. Um, uh, in the Darkness is basically like a silent story about a kid uh, who has this nightmare of Godzilla and then uh, like the Ultraman robot, which I totally, I, I know, I know, I don't know the name of him, but he's like, you know, it's him and Godzilla battling and the kids like trying to, you know, avoid the battle. It was really, really interesting. And once again, it had a nice twist at the end. The artwork was really, really nice. Um, uh, by Sue. So that, that one was a lot of fun. Um, and then we have, uh, 
uh, in the summation by Conrad and uh, Shaw. And it's really the story about this man's life and how he's connected to Godzilla and the twist and turns of his life, how he lost his father when he was born because of Godzilla. And then his revenge, you know, his whole, whole point of like, I'll get revenge on Godzilla because he killed my father. And it has some really great twists and turns. I really like that. Conrad's story is really, really good. And Shaw's artwork is really, really nice. And then um, Aftermath by uh, Altasiri is really interesting because it's it's like it's the aftermath of like a Godzilla, you know, attack. And, the, you know, there's the radiation and stuff like that. And it's also kind of like the people versus corporations. There's there's that kind of sub story going on that really those two things kind of collide. And it really, really has a I really like that one and had a solid ending to it. And it also shows how, you know, the many can can defeat their or uh, go after the, you know, the, the it's the Davy versus Goliath story. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's kind of what it is. And I, I really liked it overall. Like I said, um, I think it's well worth the 10 bucks, especially if you're a Godzilla fan. But uh, once again, all the stories were solid. There was, like I said, some that I enjoyed more than others. And that's not saying that the other ones are bad. Um, as with always with these anthologies, you're going to, you're probably going to like some of them over others. But like I said, I don't think there were, there were no clunkers in the bunch. So it, it it's well worth picking up, uh, especially if you're a Godzilla fan. I think you'll enjoy uh, overall all the stories. Next up, we have Ultimate X-Men number three, written and drawn by Peach Momoko. Uh, so really what this story is, is about Maystone's origin, how, you know, her mutant abilities came about and how her family has dealt with it. I really don't want to say too much about the story because it's really what's what I really like what Momoko here is doing is kind of dissecting what a superhero book can be. And it's her take on that. And I think what's really interesting, it's really character driven. I really, we have not had that really much action or anything, which I actually enjoy because it's taking what we know about the X-Men and just telling it in such a different way that it's absolutely amazing. I mean, obviously we know that Momoko's artwork is just absolutely gorgeous, but I think the thing is what she's doing with this story is really, um, you know, building it up so slowly. And so, you know, it's, it's a book that really kind of washes over you, uh, with its story. And then you have just this gorgeous artwork that she does. And I'm really loving what she's doing. Um, it's, it's kind of just as such a reinvention of, of the superhero genre in some respects and such a different take that it's just really fabulous. I honestly, it, it this is a really big surprise from Marvel on taking a chance with this in, in some respects, because I mean, I know she's like their big cover artist and everything, but to let her do this and just kind of like here, do whatever you want has really paid off in spades on this book. I love this book. It's really a must buy comic every month. Uh, next up, we have Disney's Hercules number two written by Elliot Kalan with or artwork by George uh, Combatus. Uh, so uh, what it was is um, that uh, Herc and uh, Galita are on a mission because Galita was created by, the gods. And so they have to go find out what has happened to the gods. And, uh, they, they, uh, they go to, uh, I know I'm going to mess this up. Uh, Hapitus, uh, where he's created a, like a, uh, uh, build a clockwork monster or, you know, war, war machine. And so they have to go and find out what has happened to his wife and, you know, it, it's it's uh, Herc, Galita, and Phil that go to figure out what's kind of going on. And that's really what this issue is about. Um, what uh, uh, Kalan is doing here, he's kind of building the story up. And obviously, I think we're going to see a certain, possibly a certain villain next issue. I don't know. Uh, wink, wink. Uh, and uh, he, what I like is he's building a, a story within the universe of, of the Hercules. It's obviously post the film and everything. And I like, you know, he's he's put all the characters in there and everything. Meg is there. Um, and it's just, it's a fun story. It's a good all ages. I think if you're a fan of Hercules, you're going to like it. Um, 
I, I wouldn't say that it's like the most mind blowing, you know, st book that I've ever read, but it's a good, solid all ages book. It's fun. Um, and then Kamba Diz, Kamba Diz, uh artwork is really, really nice. He really captures the feel of the animated uh, film, but he really just very much makes it his own. And they're both having, you can obviously tell they're having a really good time doing this. It's the same team who did the uh, Hades miniseries, which I really enjoyed. That was a blast. And this one is a little more superhero oriented because obviously it, it deals, you know, it ha the story, main story is about Hercules, but they still have that fun, the same fun joy that they had in Hercules or in uh, Hades uh, miniseries. So I still think it's well worth checking out. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. I think Dynamite's done a really nice job with, with these Disney books and uh, it's still worth, worth checking out. Uh, next up, we have Fish Flies, number six, written and drawn by Jeff Lemire. Uh, now, this is a very interesting uh, kind of twist in the story, uh, especially this late in the game, but that's what I really like about it. So what it is is Helen goes to the psychic, and while she's there, because the psychic is like, hey, I just tell people what they want to know, but uh, what it is is Helen basically has this, uh, the psychic unlocks this this thing where Helen actually sees how the fish flies monster was first born. And that's the, it's, it's kind of like the past leading to the present. And a lot of people may not, you know, like where Lemire has put this, but I think it's really important where he has put it towards the end of the story, because if he'd revealed this early on, this book wouldn't have worked as well. And, you know, you, you get to see that how how everything started in this town, how this town is, I don't want to say cursed or anything, but how the fish flies, how they relate to the town and how the monster came about and how the monster, why the monster comes back in a way. So we know that the monster was a, a guy who shot a kid and then he, the fish flies kind of bit him and made him into the monster. So we actually learn how... And why that happens. And once again, I think him by Lemire putting this towards the end of the story makes a lot of sense. And there's also a twist with Helen's son, the boy who was shot in the convenience store. Um, and that will lead into the big, uh, you know, finale that, that's that's coming. So I look, I'm a huge Lemire fan. I really like this book a lot. I know that his artwork is really not for everyone. I know he has a very different style, but I really like what he's doing here. And in this, this particular issue was one of my favorites. I really enjoyed this issue. Um, I know, like I said, it's, 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 it's tough for some people, but I really highly recommend this book. I really love this book. And, uh, Lemire's doing, <coughs> excuse me, doing a really great job here. So definitely continue to pick that book up. Uh, next up we have Gone, number three, written and drawn by Jock. Uh, so I did look this up and I wasn't crazy that there is a bit of a big gap. Uh, the issue two was published in February and this came out, uh, last week at the, at the end of, uh, uh, just the first of May. So it's, it's been a pretty big gap. So it was really, it was kind of tough. I think, um, I, so basically the story really here is the, 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 the final chapter of Abby, uh, on the ship that has been infected. And it really, she's just trying to get home. That is really what, you know, the basis of the whole thing is that she stowed away on the ship things got crazy. There was, there was smugglers on the ship, mercenaries and all hell broke loose. And really it's, you know, this final chapter is about her getting home and the, the secrets to, that she has discovered, uh, from her past about her father, uh, and all that. I think the thing is that reading this, this kind of by itself, this issue was a little bit anticlimactic, but I think it's also, this is going to be one of those stories that I think when you read it in one shot, it's going to work a lot better. It's, uh, some books are like that where they just work better reading it in one shot. And I think this is going to be one of them. Um, I still think Jog did a nice job on the, the story. Um, and, uh, you know, his artwork is absolutely gorgeous. And I, I think there's some nice twists and turns in this final story of her getting home where that it's, it's, yes, she gets home, bit of a spoiler, not that that's a big 
you know, reveal or anything, but it's, it's the journey that she's taken to get home, like from the beginning to the end and how that journey has affected her personally and her life. So I think that's what really the takeaway is. It's like, you know, you, you may not do what you think you're going to do, but it, it's, it works out in the end, but maybe not the way you thought. That's that's the only way I can sum it up. But I did like it. I think it's there will be a hardcover collection of it coming out this summer. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be one of those. I think when you read all three issues in one shot, it's going to work a lot better than than that big gap between the second and third issue. So I I enjoyed it. I just think it's just going to I it's one of those I need to go back and read in one shot. So I think you know, that's really the way to, to look at that book. And then finally this week, we have Action Comics number uh, 1065, written by Joshua Williamson, with artwork by Rafia Sandoval and Miguel uh, Mendocia. Uh, so this is the uh, House of Brainiac Part 3. And so what this is, is Lobo and Superman have gone after uh, the uh, Lobo, Brainiac's Lobo army and so they're fighting, and then Supergirl and Connor have escaped their pods, but they've been shrunk down, so they're now they're small size, and they're trying to navigate Brainiac's ship through um, being small, and they uh, they also break out uh, Livewire and Parasite um, to help them, and that's really what's kind of going on in, in this issue. Um, I, I've liked the House of Brainiac, but I do think that, you know, this is the thing. This this is the third part. So we're kind of in the middle of a story. So it's a middle issue. Uh, and so there is stuff happening and there's, there's ramifications of Superman and Lobo versus the Lobo army. And it's really one of those, it's like I said, it's just a middle issue. So it's enjoyable for what it is, but we're kind of in, in the middle of the, the story. Uh, I have, I have liked it better than I thought, but like I said, this issue is kind of like, okay, it's nice. It's the middle. So it's, it's not a flashy issue, but it's, it's part of the story that needs to be told. So as with any storyline that goes multiple issues, you're going to have like a little, not kind of a bit of a dip in the middle because it has to like get certain things so it can end. So that's what we've got here. And uh, Williamson's still doing a pretty decent job on it. We'll kind of see how it all ends and comes together in the end. That's going to be the key. But I do like uh, Sandoval's and Mendoza's artwork. It's really a nice looking book. And, and hopefully it's only a few more issues to, to wrap up the story hopefully it won't go on too long uh because i could see that kind of happening being drawn out but hopefully williamson won't do that here so that's going to do it this week uh as always public service announcement i get all my comics at pulp fiction comics long beach california ryan skinner runs a great store uh uh it's you know he has a great selection of new comics uh trades and paperback uh trades and graphic novels that he offers a discount every day has a really nice manga selection uh they've actually expanded the manga selection uh it, quite recently and it's quite big they have a really wonderful all ages uh section which is really really great you know if you bring the family there's something for everybody uh there's uh Annie, Wendy, and Derek, uh, they're at the store too. Uh, you even might find me a few few times there. Uh, but it's a really good, solid comic book store. And as always, really support your local comic shop. They're the backbone of the industry. And um, it, uh, it, you know, they really, and, and make sure that you buy, if you order stuff, make sure you pick it up on a regular basis because they have to they have to pay for it before you do. Uh, don't leave them in the lurch. Uh, if you're having financial problems, look, I've gone through it before. Just let them know. They, in the case of Ryan, he was willing to like, you know, help me and everything. So, you know, it's it's like just take care of your comic shop and and be good to them. That's really the the important thing. And as always, we end our show with be kind, be kind to each other, and be kind to yourself. Uh, I know times are tough. I get it. Uh, things are expensive. Things are crazy. Uh, but you know, just being kind to others doesn't cost anything. It's good for you. It's good for other people. And being and being kind and taking care of yourself, that's very important too. People tend to forget to take care of themselves and that, that can really, you know, be tough on you. So I know it's tough out there. 
we'll all get through it. Just, just hang on. And, you know, I always say the one thing, Hey, look, no matter how crazy things are every week, I get to read comics. And, and that's, that to me is the best thing. It's just reading comics is, the, it's just the absolute best. So take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself. Uh, that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. We've had a lot of new subscribers. Thanks for joining. Uh, comments are welcome. I appreciate all the, the great comments we've had lately and the new subscribers. Thanks for uh, joining us. Hopefully you'll stick around and keep watching the videos. And uh, that's going to do it this week. Uh, this is Stephen from popculturemaven.com signing off. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.